Good evening. It's good to be back out with each and every one of you this evening. Tonight we're going to have a reading service, and we've done this a couple of times here at our evening worship at West Mason. And I'm going to do it a little bit differently this time. If you want to open your Bibles to Psalm 113, we're going to read through a selection of psalms called the Hallel. Psalm 113 to 118. And this is a grouping of songs in the Jewish songbook that we have recorded in our Bible that's typically sang at holy days and feast days. Now, before anybody jumps to conclusions, I just realized today that sunset today is the beginning of Rosh Hashanah, and Rosh Hashanah is the new year for the Jews, but this is not a time when they would normally sing the Hallel. So that's not why I'm doing this. They would sing the Hallel, however, at big feast days like those prescribed in Leviticus, especially Passover. And so I want you to be thinking about this as we go through. And as we go through, normally what would happen during a typical reading service is somebody would get up and read a section, then I would come up and kind of add some thoughts, and we would go through a text that way with readers and commentary. Rather than giving commentary, though, I'd like to be praying in between these psalms, almost as a back-and-forth conversation with God. We read what the psalm says, and we pray together to him. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to have some men come forward, read one psalm at a time. Some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. But in between each one, we're going to go to God in prayer, thinking about what we've read from his word. And in that way, we're in a conversation with him as we go through these texts. And then we'll have the invitation at the end. But really, when we come to this, Hallel, it's a fancy Jewish word to us. But really, it just means praise God. Praise Yahweh is hallelujah. And so when we see the Hallel, you'll notice this refrain over and over in these psalms that we read, this praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And we're going to see why he's worthy of praise as we go through each of these psalms. And so we're going to start here, and Cole Wolf is going to read Psalm 113 for us. Uh, Just so you know, as he's coming up here, the, the slides behind me will have the English Standard Version of your scriptures, as well as whatever you're reading in front of you. So 113. Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high? Who looks far down on the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Almighty and Heavenly Father, you are worthy of all of our praise, God. Who truly is like you, Father? From the moment that the sun rises each day until when it sets, every moment of our existence yells out to us that you deserve our praise, that you deserve our highest esteem, that our highest thoughts and adoration should be directed to you. Father, we see in your word that you are mindful and compassionate on people who are downtrodden and hopeless. And Father, we admit that at one time or another, when it's been in the past or whether it's now, Lord, we are in desperate need of you. We thank you for being our Redeemer, the one who lifts us up from the ash heap and sits us in a place of honor in your family. We ask you, Father, to continue to transform us and move in our lives so that we could be mindful of you, so that we could see your glory, that we would acknowledge that you are looking down on us each and every day, that you survey everything, and that everything is in your control. For this, Father, we give you praise, we give you the credit, we give you thanksgiving, we give you honor, we give you glory, and we give you our hearts. Help us, Father, to always acknowledge who you are to us, and help us to always love you and praise you for it. Amen. Continue with Psalm 114. (coughs) 
Psalm 114. <clears throat> when Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from the people of strange language, Judah became his sanctuary, and Israel his domain. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the little hills like lambs. What ails you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back. O mountains, that you, have sk that you skipped like rams, O little hills like lambs. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flint into a fountain of waters. Let's pray. Our Lord and our Father, we're mindful that you have been with us every day of our lives up until now. And as we think, Father, of the past, where we have sought you and where we have turned away from you, you have always been present with us. We have been in your presence, whether we have acknowledged it or not. And when we think, Father, of the days gone past, the days that existed before we were even on this earth, that you have continually proven yourself to be strong and to be full of goodness and grace and power. We read in your word here, Father, of the power of you delivering your people out of bondage from Egypt, that the nature that you created, that the sea itself would turn and flee, that the structures of immovable rock would skip and move at your summoning. You have parted, Father, not only the sin of the seas of the Red Sea in Moses' day, but you have parted the seas of sin that have separated us from you so that we could walk through and be your people on the other side. We ask, Father, that you would help us be mindful of this awesome gift every single day, that as the earth would tremble at the, your presence, that we also would tremble at your presence, Father, and give you the awe and reverence that you so willingly deserve. And Father, as we think upon your faithfulness, about how you act and move in our lives for good, that you would open our eyes and our ears and our hearts, that your faithfulness to us would motivate us to move forward in faith, that the way that you've proven yourselves in days past would give us resolve to live for you in days ahead. Amen. Psalm 115. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. For the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Why should the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in the heavens. He does all that he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but do not speak. Eyes, but do not see. They have ears, but do not hear. Noses, but do not smell. They have hands, but do not feel. Feet, but do not walk. And they do not make a sound in their throat. Those who make them become like them. So do all who trust in them. O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has remembered us. He will bless us. He will bless this house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both the small and the great. May the Lord give you increase, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the children of men. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any who go down in, into silence. 
But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. We continue in prayer. Not to us, Father. It's so easy to get caught up, Lord, in seeking our own glory in this life. But we join in the psalmist here in asking that we would look past glory for ourselves and instead give your name glory because you are so deserving of it. Father, we're mindful now of the choices that we have in our lives, that you even give us free will in the first place, Father, is amazing, that we can choose to do what we will with the time that we're given, with the abilities that we have, with the people around us and the relationships we're blessed with. Help us, Father, to see these things truly as blessings and help us, Father, to trust in you. We confess and admit to you, Lord, that we are all too quick to turn to things that are like what this psalm describes as the idols of the days gone past. Even though they might not look the same, we put our trust in empty, dead things. Help us to turn from our selfish ambitions and desires to give your name glory instead. We ask you to keep us from the idolatry and the worldly aims that creep into our lives, that keep us distracted, Father, from pursuing a deeper relationship with you. Help us, Father, to rid ourselves of those things that hold us back from pursuing you. We see you, Lord, and recognize that you have always been and continue to be our help and our shield that you guide us and you guard us, that you, Father, give purpose and meaning to our lives. Teach us to trust you and to seek your blessings in our lives, that as we seek your blessings, that we would bless you, Father, today and every day, not with, even without knowing, Father, what tomorrow may hold, that we would be dedicated to praising you with every breath in our lungs because you are our God. Amen. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my supplications, because he has inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I shall call upon him as long as I live. The cords of death encompassed me, and the terrors of Sheol came upon me. I found distress and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is compassionate. The Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low, and he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have rescued my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I shall walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed when I said, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, all men are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I shall lift up the cup of salvation. And call upon the name of the Lord. I shall pay my vows to the Lord. O oh, may it be in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his godly ones. O oh, Lord, surely I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you I shall offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I shall pay my vows to the Lord. O oh, may it be in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. I love you, O Lord. We're surrounded, Father, by a world that takes this word love and twists it makes it mean far less than what you have revealed yourself to be. We know, Father, from your word that you are love, that the only way we appreciate love is because you exist, that you fashioned all other things into existence. And we love you, Father, because your love is an active love, a love that acts. 
We are overcome, Father, by darkness. We feel despair. We're faced with heartache and turmoil, difficult things in the world around us. Father, even as we experience that darkness, even as we see it and acknowledge it, keep us from bitterness. Keep us from despair. Keep us from being cynical and apathetic. Father, help us to appreciate those things for what they are, but draw us back to the light that is you, that we would hold you and your truth up all the more in our lives. We ask you, Lord, to guide us to a greater faith in the light of your love and truth. You have saved us, Father, and you offer salvation fully and freely because of what you have done. We thank you for all of your benefits to us. Help us, Lord, to call on your name every day. And Father, we ask that you would help us to re realize and recognize that we are your servants, that we live and move and have our being because of you, and that we owe you, Father, our very lives. Teach us, Father, what it means to serve you. Help us to recognize the examples set by your Son, and Father, when we read in your word that this psalmist would pay his vows to the Lord in the presence of the people, that for us, as we think about this, our vow is our very life, that we would be a living sacrifice, that I'm not seeking my own will anymore, but that we are seeking your will in each of our lives, Father, that it's your will and your pleasure that we are striving for. And so help us, Father, when it's difficult, when it demands much of us, Hold our hands and walk through those dark places, Father, and help us to realize the awesome opportunities we have to serve you, to serve your kingdom, and to bring glory to your name, and that this is the greatest thing that we could do with our time, with our abilities, and with our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. As we continue, Father, we set our minds on just how awesome you are in doing all these things that we read about and we devote ourselves, Lord, and we commit ourselves, our minds and our hearts, to focus on your praiseworthiness. Lord, we confess that it's really easy to get caught up in the routine of things and making things commonplace, of losing sight of the awe and the wonder of who you are in our day-to-day -day lives, that you are still the same God and that you are still active in our midst. Father, keep our awe and our zeal burning as we seek you out in our prayer lives, in our personal studies, as we do work for your kingdom, both here in this congregation and in our individual lives with our families, and as we go to work, as we worship you each and every opportunity we have to lift your name high in our lives. We recognize, Father, that you desire all nations and all peoples to recognize you for who you are and to come to know you and to be your children as you have made them to be. Help us to display your praiseworthiness to others. Help us to live in such a way that we praise you with our whole being and that others would have the opportunity to recognize it, not because we have something remarkable about us, but that it is you who distinguishes us. Help us to recall and dwell on your steadfast love and your trustworthy works that caused us to believe and to devote ourselves to you when we believed and obeyed the gospel. And help that, Father, motivate us to move forward and to proclaim that your faithfulness endures forever. Amen. Psalm 1-8. 
18. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say, his mercy endures forever. I called on the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire in those who hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They surrounded me, yes, they surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They surrounded me like bees. They were quenched like a fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. You pushed me violently that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I will go through them, and I will praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous shall enter. I will praise you, for you have answered me, and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the key chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, and he has given us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, I will exalt you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. And we give thanks to you, O oh God, because your steadfast love endures forever. You are good, Father. You are our helper. You are a refuge for us. You are the source of every strength that we experience and the theme of every praise on our lips. Anything good, Father, comes from you. You are salvation excel. And you are my salvation. You are the cornerstone that salvation is built upon. You are God, and you are my God. Your love stands strong and unwavering, and we thank you, Father, as your people for your consistency, that you do not change, that while we might worry about things coming and going in our own lives with the ebbs and flows of life, that you remain sure and steadfast, that we can always rely on your character and your nature and your truth to stand the test of time because you made time itself. Show us, Father, where we can grow in our understanding and abiding in this deep love for us, that we would reflect that love to those around us. Father, show us where in your great love you are correcting us where we may be out of line with your will and you may be using people, circumstances, your own word to help us and turn us and discipline us. Help us to not close our hearts off when this happens, Father, but to lean into you, to turn and to open ourselves up to receive what you are teaching us. Father, we ask that your deeds of old, your teachings, your ways, and your promises, these things that we can read about and again just take for granted, Father. Help us 
to keep the marvel in our eyes, that these things would be marvelous to us each and every day as we read of them, as we think on them, and as we live them out in our own lives. Teach us, Father, to number our days that each one is made by you and that gives us reason to rejoice and be glad, even if it is a dark day, Father, that we can choose to find joy and gladness because you are there. Father, we pray that you would give us true success, true prosperity that comes from knowing you and the wealth of being spiritually rich as your children and heirs, that we would walk in the light of your truth. We thank you, O Lord, for being so good to us and that your steadfast love never changes. Amen. If you notice as we've gone through these psalms, there's a common theme that these songs are songs of deliverance, whether it's from the perspective of the nation of Israel as a whole, talking about the deliverance at the Red Sea, or whether it's an individual voice, such as that found in Psalm 116, that anybody can put themselves in this perspective and recognize how God has saved them. These were, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, songs that are composed of this hallel that's normally sang at the Passover. And I'm struck when I go to verses like Matthew 26 and verse 30, or in Mark chapter 14 and verse 26, where it simply says, Jesus, after he and his disciples observed the Passover, they sang a hymn, and then they went out to the Garden of Gethsemane. It is not beyond the realm of reasoning or logic to assume, and perhaps well sounded, that these are some of the very words that Jesus and his disciples sang right before he went out to be betrayed. How does that change how you read these? Because it's powerful to me to think about our Savior in his final hours of freedom, his final hours of life before he is crucified, to be singing these songs with his closest followers. To think about that these psalms were written and that they actually find their full fulfillment in what Jesus is about to do on the cross. In Psalm 113, when it says he raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people, you and I need to realize that this is us in sin. When we try to live without God, when we rebel against him, we are wallowing in ash and filth. We are hopeless, and there is none to lift us up, save the one that we've spat in the face of. And he gives more grace by reaching down and lifting us up. He extends that hand, which is awesome, and he does it in the person of Jesus. In Psalm 114, it talks about the whole earth trembling at his presence, and from the hardest hearts, He can bring forth fountains of living water that never runs dry. Jesus says so when he talks about the Holy Spirit, the people that will live for him, connected to God through this Spirit. And he is the one to satisfy the deepest longing of your soul. That's the invitation of the gospel that's being realized. Even as Jesus is singing these songs before he goes out, this is what he's thinking about. In Psalm 115, we talked about those dead idols that have all these mouths and eyes and ears, but they don't actually work. And it says the people who worship them and follow them become like them. And so when we strive after anything, when we put anything in the center of our hearts, in the center of our lives, that's not God, we are dead. Not sick, not a little off, dead. That's what we deserve. And yet he remembers us and blesses us and gives us ample opportunities to hear his voice and to turn away from those dead idols to serve the living God. 
in Psalm 116, in our self-wrought distress and anguish that comes from sin, we deserve separation from God, from every good thing. That's what we deserve. But God is gracious, merciful, and he frees us from the pangs and the snares of death itself. Psalm 117, all nations can praise and extol him because this gospel, this good news, is for every single person who draws breath and lives in this life. Even the vilest, even the worst, even me, and even you. And in Psalm 118 that Sean just read for us, verse 19, it says, Open to me the gates of of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. Has the Lord become your salvation? Do you live and abide in God through Christ every day that you live? In the perspective of this psalm, the question is, have you entered through this gate, this awesome gate that the righteous go through, that I would never be able to enter on my own accord, of my own deserving? But Jesus in John chapter 10, verses 9 and 11 says, I am the door. I'm the gate. If anyone enters by me, he will be Saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they would have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The gate of righteousness has been opened to you by the door that is the Son of God himself. The question is, have you entered into this gate? Have you entered into the family of God? Have you experienced the blessings that come from putting your trust and your hope and your very life into the hands of the God who made you? If you have not, now is the time. You obey this gospel that these psalms were pointing to, that Jesus fulfills and brings to us, and you can have life and life abundantly. You can sing these psalms and recognize how they are fulfilled in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. By confessing him, repenting of the sins that these psalms even talk about, turning to him in full gladness, being buried with his son in baptism so that you can be raised in newness of life. I hope that these psalms have been an encouragement to those of us who have done that, that we can always remember to praise the Lord no matter what the sky outside might look like or what the condition of my heart might be on a given day, that God is always worthy of praise, and sometimes I just need to talk to him and be reminded of it and go into his word and remember just how many things I can be thankful for and praise him for. But if you need to obey the gospel now, please let us know. And if you have questions, please ask them. Do not leave here without being right with this awesome God who is our shield and our help the great God who is our deliverer, our redeemer, and our savior. If you need to obey him, please let